नमस्कार एवरीवन वी वेलकम ऑल टू मैनेज कृषि ज्ञानदीप नॉलेज लेक्चर सीरीज नंबर ट्वेंटी टुडे ऑन ट्वेंटी सेवेंथ अक्टोबर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू मैनेज ऑर्गेनाइजेस कृषि ज्ञानदीप नॉलेज लेक्चर सीरीज बाय इनवाइटिंग एमिनेंट पर्सन्स टू शेयर देयर लाइफ टाइम एक्सपीरियंसेस विद द एक्सटेंशन फंक्शनरीज अक्रॉस द कंट्री Uh, these eminent persons are from varied fields of agriculture and allied sectors and also from development sectors here we invite outstanding personalities to manage to give live lectures to the participants of the training programs faculty members and staff consultants and also to the students of uh, manage these lectures are recorded as video films in order to share them to various extension professionals working at the grassroots level so that last mile extension worker is uh, able to listen and get inspired and motivated by these talks and these video films are also shared with uh, many of the officers more than 1 lakh officers who are working at the field level from various departments like agriculture horticulture fisheries sericulture and uh, also to the faculty members of uh, state agricultural universities and scientists of kvks and uh, also to agripreneurs and public at large today we are privileged to invite honorable shri dashrat tambhale director atma from commissionerate of agriculture government of maharashtra pune and uh, sir will be speaking on value chain development based agricultural extension welcome sir Now I request Dr. K. C. Gumagolmat, Director, Monitoring and Evaluation, Manage, to welcome and introduce today's eminent personality. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Sri Tambaleji, today's eminent speaker. It is my privilege to introduce uh, Sri Tambaleji. Sri Tambaleji acquired his education uh, from Marathwada Agricultural University. He completed his graduation and uh, master's degree in uh, genetics and plant breeding. Later on, he started his career in uh, Department of Agriculture. From 2010 to 2013, he served as a state coordinator for uh, Maharashtra State Agriculture Competitive uh, Project funded by World Bank. So, as a project coordinator, he mobilized farmers into groups, and these groups were converted into farmer producer companies. So, this was a relatively a new concept of that time. So, 400 such companies involving 1.2 lakh farmers were formed, and they were supported with uh, erection of Farmers Common Service Center. also he worked as a state coordinator for public private partnership uh, program of rkvy later in the year 2013 he worked as a deputy director from 2015 to 2018 he served as a district superintendent of agriculture in jalna district during this period he received prime minister award of excellence in public administration for best performance in implementing pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana so presently he is working as a director agriculture and he has a lot of credentials and awards uh, to his credit so these awards include prime minister's best award for excellence in public administration this was confirmed by government of india for best performance in implementing pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana the second award he got is rajiv gandhi gatiman prashasan award uh, this is uh, awarded by government of maharashtra he received first place in competition for good administration practices the third award which he got is a certificate of appreciation from government of maharashtra for relief and rehabilitation work carried out after earthquake in 1993 in latur so these are all the credentials of uh, sri tambale ji now i request tambale ji to deliver his uh, address good morning all at the outset i thank dr chandrasekhar who during one of our uh, conversation invited me to deliver the lecture of this series manage krishi gyanthip knowledge lecture series so uh, at the outset i thank the manage and then uh, let us begin with the uh, today's topic directly as uh, was told by uh, by the institute that i am in the agriculture department since 1991 now i have completed more than 30 years in service and uh, i served for right from the district level to the state level now i am after joint director also i am promoted as a director agriculture and presently working with two major projects one is the 
regular work of director agriculture atma and another is the i am looking after a world bank funded project uh, that that was mentioned in the lecture smart state of maharashtra agri business and rural transformation project my lecture would uh, the content should be little bit about the agriculture extension history and reforms in agriculture extension that which we saw in our lifetime not very ancient history i would like to speak about then thereafter i will speak about the value chain what mean the value chain in agriculture then why the value chain development is important in agriculture then little bit about the smart project because smart project is based on the principle of value chain development in agriculture then i will speak about the projectized extension and value chain development so how can we couple these two things uh, the agriculture development and the extension then the the tool which we developed for the agriculture extension based on value chain development that we call the value chain development school so this is not something uh, i would speak about the principles the thing which we are practicing in one of our world bank project the tool which we developed and rolled out which we call as a value chain development school so what are the contents of that and what are the principles for the participants how we rolled out that component i will speak little bit about that because all of you know that we uh, before 1980s the department of agriculture and department of rural development in many of the states were i mean the extension responsibility was with the mainly with the department of rural development the panchayati raj there we used to have agriculture officers and ag agriculture extension workers and the department was not so big so the, the department was so small and it was with the rural development department but during that phase before 80s the important development of uh, green revolution took place and the technology dissemination uh, was very important thing you many of you might be not knowing that the people were reluctant to cultivate the dwarf varieties of jowar and even for that matter wheat also and the important work of extension was carried out during that era uh, during green, green revolution and then we became the self sufficient in food so that was the kind of work our ancestors did before 1980s then from 1980s to 2000 we had a era of training and visit system which you all of you might have learned as a academic thing in the subject of extension so there was a typical hierarchy right from village level to the state level we were having contact farmers in the at grassroot level and then the village level extension worker thereafter the subject matter specialist and then the subdivisional agriculture officers principal agriculture officer and then the director agriculture so that kind of hierarchy we were having and there was a kind of two way feedback mechanism means in the monthly workshop and fortnightly workshops the subject matter specialist used to listen to the field extension officers grassroots level workers what problem they are facing in disseminating the knowledge and then the feedback used to go to agriculture universities and that was used to be discussed in monthly multidisciplinary workshops so that kind of extension work was there for 20 years and then the real expansion of agriculture department took place uh, that was also a world bank project for t and v and it was a project which was implemented in entire nation once that assistance was withdrawn then we mainstreamed the t and v system in the with the help of state governments then state government need to look after all the staff and machinery which was put in place in the t and v and then there was a kind of vacuum in agriculture extension what next how to go ahead and all of you know better that there was a stagnancy in productivity production also so then there was a thought we need to make this extension system broad based extension system and there was a project called natp national agricultural technology project which was basically for icr system but there was a component of 
extension which was introduced in after uh, uh, first midterm review of NATP and that component was ITD component innovations in technology dissemination and as a part of that component in seven states of the country in 28 districts the pilot atmas were set up and through that what we talk now about the bottom up planning instead of top down then the group based extension instead of addressing the individual farmers then the principle of uh, farming system approach first time took place means instead of uh, cropping system we started to discuss about the farming system because after all uh, the production led extension was not able to raise the income of the farmer if we concentrate only on crops it won't be possible to raise the income of the farmer then in a given unit of land how best you utilize that that piece of land for different enterprises including agriculture horticulture dairy goatery fishery whatever you can then there was a thought of farming system based extension and we started to look after not only the crops but beyond that of all enterprises related to agriculture we saw these four phases first the community development blocks of panchayati raj before 1980s then the training and bridge system then the atma system then during 2010 11 there was a talk about market led extension because only by addressing Uh, the farming system also we were able to produce more but where to sell was a important novel uh, question and that was raised by farmers now the farmers were saying now don't tell us how to grow let us know where to sell and how to sell then the concept of market led extension came in and uh, we designed a course in manage itself for market led extension and at the same time the the reforms were tried in the marketing also the model law of apmc act came in 2003 it was adopted by many states and was not adopted by many states also and there was a study during 2008 9 by world bank regarding the comparative systems in different states the marketing system in different schemes is, in different states is a different there is a separate apmc act in all states so there is a study and that was published by world bank and there was a discussion about universalization of some of the marketing regulations for entire nation during that time the market led extension came in and in maharashtra we were fortunate to have a another project called maharashtra agricultural competitiveness project the objective of the project was to increase the productivity profitability and most important the market access of farmers in state so that was a 100 million dollar uh, project which we implemented for about 8 years in this phase the institutions like farmer producer companies begin to organize in in mscp project itself we mobilized 400 farmer producer companies and offered them a 75% subsidy to have a common service center we could mobilize 400 farmer producer companies across the state after that looking into the benefits of uh, formation of farmer producer companies now the maharashtra leads in the number of farmer producer companies about 20000 farmer producer companies registered in the entire nation more than that and more than 6000 farmer producer companies registered in one state that is maharashtra so the movement began in 2010 now the government of india has a scheme for mobilizing the farmers into farmer producer companies that we call the formation of 10000 fpos so that scheme is being implemented in all states in in india even after market led extension we tried the ppp projects in all states there is a framework under rkby to have a public private partnership in agriculture with the help of that framework 
a window is available to work with the private sector where a technology company, a end user company and a farmers group can come together and have a PPP project. That, that template is called PPP IAD, Public Private Partnership for Integrated Agriculture Development. Still that is uh, working in uh, many states. The learning of the project was that we can get the partners in technologies because they want to sell their technologies. But it is difficult to onboard the end users because they are the real buyers of the commodity. If we, we could not onboard them, if we, we could not, not maybe in the form of contract farming, but at least in a contract kind of farming where they will ensure the purchase of that good which is produced, then the question of value chain arose. Now, only if you produce as per the, if the quality and quantity is as per the demand of market, that is not enough. Producer and markets are important players, but the entire value chain is also important. Now, here we will switch to what is mean by value chain and how value chain based extension we need to promote. A value chain is a set of linked activities that work to add value to a product. Value chain is a set of linked activities that work to add value to a product. It consists of actors and actions that improve a product while linking commodity producers to processors and markets. Means right from production to the end user, to the consumer, all the actors involved in handling a specific commodity, these are the activities and there are different actors in this value chain. So you would say, why should we think of a value chain? Our aim is to increase the productivity. At the most, we can teach to the farmer how to produce and may tell them where is the market for that. Then what is the need of studying the value chain? Now, hereafter, you will understand the importance. Suppose you take an example of any commodity, important commodity in your state. And you decide to study the value chain of that commodity. For example, suppose in Maharashtra, MP, Rajasthan, the soybean is the important commodity. For example, if you decide to analyze the value chain of soybean, how it would be, and there is a specific system or a specific way to write a value chain, to analyze a value chain. And uh, that kind of education we were fortunate to get in one of overseas training in Netherlands. There is a university called Van Hall Larenstein University of Applied Sciences. And we had an opportunity to work with them in one, in one of World Bank project. And they designed a customized uh, certificate course for us to teach us what is value chain and how the value chain concepts are important in case of agriculture. How the course was conducted? It was a only three, four week certificate course. In first week, they taught us how to write a value chain. There is a specific way to write a value chain. There are, there are three columns. In one column, you can say actions. In second column, there are actors. And in third column, there are supporters. Now suppose if a value chain of soybean I want to write, then I need to start it from bottom. The last column first I, I need to write. Who is the first actor in a value chain of soybean? For that matter, in any value chain, a input producer, a input company would be the first in the bottom of value chain. What is the action? Production of inputs. Inputs like fertilizer, seeds, agrochemicals. What next is the dealer, dealer who sells the inputs. Selling of input is his activity. Then comes the producer who is the farmer. The important actor in value chain is the producer. Then thereafter, once he produces his product, then it goes to market, maybe a local mandi or a APMC. And where it goes? It goes to, say, commission agent or a who helps the farmer, a producer, 
to for discovery of price and to sell the, that produce to a buyer a buyer can be a trader then thereafter it uh, all small traders sell their this produce to another level that is a wholesaler now he becomes the owner of that entire stock thereafter it goes to in case of soybean it goes to a solvent plant or a processor what he does he buys the entire soybean stock and he produces two products out of that one is the edible oil and another is the deoiled cake now what he does of these two these two by products suppose edible oil because we are short of edible oil the entire edible oil is consumed in the country whereas the deoiled cake either it is exported or can be consumed domestically domestically it can be consumed by the uh, feed manufacturers like poultry feed manufacturers animal feed manufacturers or then if it is exported it goes to overseas consumer then to the dairy industry and to the ultimate consumer of the edible oil again it goes to a wholesaler then it go it goes to retailer and then it finally goes to consumer now this is the way we write value chain this is this comes out of experience who are working in that field then there are supporters who are the supporters to value chain say extension workers like you the agriculture universities the other technology companies like inputs like fertilizer pesticides etc then beyond that there are bankers insurance companies and most importantly transporters so these are all the supporters in that value chain now once we we wrote this value chain we need to analyze the value chain how can we analyze the value chain why we call it as a value chain because every actor put some price in it and sells to another because he need to do a business producer is not the only who need to get the money but the all actors need to get money out of handling of this commodity that's why we call it as a value chain the value of a commodity increases as and when the ownership changes in upper ladder the value chain will increase normally i am not talking of aberrations <laughs> normally the value will increase suppose one quintal of soybean today fetches the price of about 5000 rupees but after processing suppose we get 18, 18 to 20 kg of edible oil and 80 kg of deoiled cake and now by today's means the value of 80 kg of deoiled cake and 20 kg of edible oil is about 10000 now out of that farmer gets 5000 where the rest of the 5000 goes what is the share of each actor in that 5000 and even the farmer that gets the 5000 is not entirely his own 5000 some of it goes to for seed for fertilizer for as a production cost to laborers so as a cost of cultivation he need to share that 5000 to many people many actors of the value chain and in upper ladder this 5000 is distributed in these all actors the artia the wholesaler the processor then again the wholesaler retailer transporter the they need to pay the interest of a, suppose a, a finance so these 5000s get distributed across all these actors now we need to analyze this who is getting suppose a consumer paying a rupee and where this rupee is going as in case of union budget or state budget we look into the pie chart where from the rupee is coming and where the rupee is being spent then where is the deficit etc we look into a kind of uh, state budget similarly in value chain the rupee spent by a farmer is shared by many actors it is not the only of a farmer now why this value chain is important 
there are problems faced by each actor in the value chain. It is not that the only farmer is at receiving end. It is true that he is vulnerable. But it is also true that all other actors also have the problems and they have the expectation from another player who is there in value chain. We need to study that. Otherwise, globally we will not be competent. For example, if a soybean producer is a major producer of soybean are Brazil, Argentina, China, America, if the cost of production in those countries is less than what, what, what we incurred in India, then whether we will be competitive in global value chain? We will never be competitive. Then if the imported soya cake is cheaper than what we produce in India, the production of soybean itself will be in danger. So that's why value chain studies are important. We need to be a competent player in entire value chain, not only in production productivity. In every action and every activity, we need to be competent. We need to be efficient. Then only we can be competent in value chain of each commodity. Now, how they taught us, the, they used to divide the class into, say, six, six compartments, six groups, like a group discussion kind of thing. A group of trainees would, would assume themselves as a producers. A group of another group of trainees assume themselves as a artiyas. A group of another trainees will assume themselves as a traders. Somebody will be processor, somebody will be a retailer, somebody will be a wholesaler. Now they will brainstorm. You imagine that you are in that position. Suppose you since you are in agriculture department, you are thinking of only agriculture, only farmers. What if you are a trader? What if you are a processor? What are your difficulties? Jot down those all difficulties. Then analyze the value chain. Then talk to each other as a part and parcel of that actor. Then you will realize that even a artia is in problem because many a times he has to pay upfront the price of the commodity. And how he pays? Just on belief and a in, in the belief of value chain, a trader he will pay him. A trader will pay him in a day or two. And suppose he disappears. What will happen to Aditya? He will be in problem. Similarly, each actor is adding value in, in the value chain because he is taking some risk. He is investing something in that value chain. That's why he is putting his some value in that value chain. So all actors are important. Now we have to think of a entire value chain development. And we need to think of a welfare of value chain, not welfare of a one actor of a value chain. Then only we can become competitive and then our value chain can become competitive. Now, during these last five minutes, what we studied, why the value chain development, uh, why it is important? First is, first and foremost thing as an as a employee of agriculture department would be to increase the producer's share in consumer rupee. If I need to increase the consumer's uh, share of a producer in consumer's rupee, I need to think of entire value chain. I need to understand the problems in value chain. Suppose a porter is there and he denies to carry a load of one quintal on his on his back and he says I will carry only 25 kg then I need to have that kind of packing so that is why if I want to increase the share of a producer in consumer rupee I need to think of entire value chain the second objective would be to increase the efficiency of actors in value chain see so that if the all value chain actors come together and they discuss the problem of each other then only the value chain will be improved then to increase coordination and trustworthy atmosphere amongst the stakeholders many times these value chains are opaque if you go to some processing unit he will say i will not i can't take you in my processing unit 
because how he is adding value and uh, whether he is uh, adulterating or maintaining quality he won't be able to tell to anybody or a genuine reason maybe there can be a theft of a technology so to have a kind of coordination we need to have a coordination amongst the the possible coordination amongst the all actors then to create a kind of win win situation for all the actors and to make the value chain ultimately a globally competitive value chain now in first week we were taught about these principles and the second week we were taken to the field and we were told to analyze your value chain of your country suppose the grapes are exported from maharashtra to netherland now go to market how your product is placed what is the price the end user need to pay and where that the rupee of a, or a dollar or a euro of a consumer goes then we need to think lot then we need to talk to many people we need to enquire with many actors then only we will be able to analyze the value chain otherwise we will talk of only production and productivity we, we will say not beyond that now this is the thought came now now suppose in a given in a given geography for a given commodity i need to uh, improve a value chain and i i want to convert this into a project of my own suppose i want to develop a value chain of soybean in maharashtra then what is the cafeteria available for me in the form of different schemes hardware and software available from different schemes so that i can improve the value chain of soybean then there is a brainstorming thought how can you improve your value chain and how the brainstorming will take place all actors will sit together and they will decide what kind of expectations are there from each other now suppose in case of soybean the in the bottom we had a input producer as a first first step uh, in value chain then there was a dealer suppose i want to shorten the value chain what i will do i will form a fpo of a, of a soybean growers there is a scheme of 10000 fpos you can you can organize or mobilize the farmers into farmer producer company to bring the scale of economies to reduce the cost of cultivation and to access the newer markets for all these things and to aggregate the product for all these reasons we are organizing the farmers mobilizing the farmers into farmer producer companies i will mobilize the soybean farmer producer uh, producers into a farmer producer company there is a scheme available so by that way what will i do i will give the input license to farmer producer company and will cut down the role of a dealer then the the quality inputs the farmer would, would be able to receive at cheaper rate because one of the agent has been removed then we we can have a contract farming formally or informally of a farmer producer company directly with a processor say for in this in this case a soybean in oil extractor and it is possible and we are doing that then the entire chain of intermediaries can be removed we can connect this apo directly to the solvent plant or uh, soybean oil extractor then there is a win win situation between between a solvent plant and a farmer how because if a solvent plant owner purchases the soybean from a wholesaler and he is purchasing from a farmer producer company there will be definitely advantage to him because so many actors are removed the chain is shortened that's why he will be able to get the uh, produce at cheaper price similarly if the farmer producer company takes a direct marketing license and sells this produce to directly to the uh, solvent plant then minimum of 5% of the marketing charges he can cut down there is a commission that means you know better the rti charges something the porter charges something 
then everything can be reduced. So I can make these interventions from existing schemes only. I can use the marketing reforms here also because in some states it is compulsory to go to APMCs. Now in the states like Maharashtra and few others, you can, you can have a direct marketing license. You need not go to APMC. You can sell your produce directly to processor or any other end user. So that kind of reform in agriculture marketing can be utilized in this value chain development. Then similarly in upper ladder also, while exporting the grapes and uh, pomegranate, we have to go through the anar net and grape net. We have to register our farm. We have to tell the exporter what kind of pesticides we used. We have to test the produce before selling for uh, maximum uh, residues of pesticide. And if it goes beyond certain limit, the entire consignment is rejected. But for domestic purpose, we are not doing that. Why we should not do for domestic purpose also the same thing? Why my domestic consumer should not get the quality? So by this means, we can develop the value chain of any other commodity. Fresh fruits and vegetable, it is more important because the traceability is not there, health concerns are there, and we are not sure whether the produce we are getting is of a residue free or not. For this kind of interventions, there is a project called uh, SMART, called the State of Maharashtra's Agribusiness and Rural Transformation Project. The very objective of the project is to support development of inclusive and competitive agriculture value chains, focusing on small holder farmers and agripreneurs in state. Now, objective statements are very specific. What the World Bank would say, if you are doing something which addresses your objective statements, you do that activity in a, in a project. If it is not addressing the objective, you cannot do the activity in that world, any project. So the important words are, we want to develop the value chain, but those value chains should be inclusive and competitive. Inclusive in the sense, they should address the concerns of smallholders because more than 84% of farmers in, in country are either small or marginal farmers. So the value chain development project should address the concern of smallholders. And competitive in the sense, you need to compete with the global value chain. They need to be inclusive to accommodate the downtrodden sections of the society. And equally, it is important to have a competitive value chain. So, uh, this is the objective statement and it's uh, as I told you, this is a $3 million value chain development project uh, out of which 70% comes from as a loan from World Bank, IBRD loan and 30% is borne by the state government and 27% to be precise is borne by the state government and the uniqueness of the project is that 3% need to be raised from the private sector. From the private sector CSR, etc., we need to raise 3% cost of the project. Now, there is a separate, uh, can be a separate topic on what is the smart project, what, what are objective, what are interventions, and how we rolled out, etc. But what we tried, we tried different types of value chain in this project. Now, there are five types of value chains we tried in this smart project. One we call productive partnerships. Now, what is the productive partnership? We need to identify a CBO, community-based organization, for understanding purpose you may call APO. Now the beneficiary in this smart are only community-based organizations like APOs, pharma producer companies, etc. No individual beneficiary would be there. Now the APO and the end user will have a memorandum of understanding for what, for what kind of commodity they need to produce, what quantity they need to produce, what quality would be the of that produce. And then there will be a broader agreement on price discovery. Price discovery would be say for example 2% more than the local APMC. Then it will be 7% because the marketing cost itself is a 5%.
So that kind of broader agreement need to be there and we need to connect these pharma producer companies with the institutional buyers. A institutional buyer may be a processor, may be a, a organized retail chain, may be an exporter. We need to have that kind of fixed MOU between a pharma producer company and an end user. And to support this value chain, the project will pump the grants for development of infrastructure of that FPO. That infrastructure may be a warehouse, may be a cold chain, may be a custom hiring implement bank. So whatever they need and the offer to them is 60% viability gap fund or you may say a subsidy up to 60%. Why it is 60%? Because this kind of proposition need to be a business proposal. You can't flatly offer the 60% subsidy. But this need to be a business proposal. And then the role of institutes like manage is very important. We need to teach these pharma producer companies how to prepare the business proposals. How the simpler formats of a business proposals can be prepared. We prepared that one in, in project. A simple uh, excel based uh, program where you give all the inputs like uh, what is the market ever surplus uh, what is the prevailing price in the market then after filling all these things the output would be what is the internal rate of return what is the uh, what is the turnover time all these kind of economic parameters economic feasibility measuring parameters will come out of that excel format so we need to teach these things to our extension workers and to the pharma producer companies now. Earlier this was not the case. We need to be precise on business proposals, how to prepare the business proposals. And once the business proposal is prepared, that need to be honored by bank. Because 60% equity they need to raise from banks. The proposal need to be a bankable proposal. How to prepare the bankable proposals and beyond that, Suppose bank honored that and they offered the loan also 40%. Then the project management. These are the two very important aspects in value chain development of agricultural commodities, which we need to include in the syllabus of agriculture extension workers. How to prepare the business proposals? Then once the bankable business proposal is prepared, then how to manage that project? Project management and business proposal preparations are the most important things. Now, we sanctioned 400 such projects, sub-projects of a pharma producer companies in state. And the cost is more than 500 crores. Out of that, 300 would be a project price and 200 they need to raise from banks or from their own things. And here the thing of convergence will come. Then we have a scheme of AIF, Agri Infra Fund, where the loan to the farm gate infrastructure is offered with an interest subvention of 3%. The bank will lend at 9%, 3% would be interest subvention from Government of India scheme. You know the Atmanirbhar scheme of Agri Infra Fund, where the interest, uh, interest subvention of 3% on long term loan is there. And up to 2 crores, you need not give collateral. The collateral is covered under CGT MSE, which is there for SME sector. These pharma producers are considered as SMEs. And there is another fund raised by Government of India with the NAP subduction. There the Government of India invested 1000 crore and there also we have a uh, facility of interest subvention and the uh, collateral free loan of up to 2 crores. Now we need to converse these schemes of central government with the state government projects. And by means of convergence, we can have these productive partnerships of projects. Similarly, we have another kind of value chain development sub project we call that a market access plan. I don't have a specific buyer for, a pro for, a, for my product, but I will search a new market. I will not sell my produce in the existing APMCs. I will sell it either over in overseas market as, as, uh, as an export or I will sell it in another state where it is more profitable to sell for such kind of proposition also we offer 60 percent uh, vgf viability gap fund or a kind of subsidy and there also they can erect the 
infrastructure like uh, we discussed warehouses, cold storages, uh, cold chain, all, all those things. Then the third type of is, uh, value chain is the warehouse based projects, especially for the PACs, primary agricultural credit cooperative societies, which are there in villages. For them, they do have small warehouses, but not at, at the standard of WADA, Warehousing Development Authority accredited, accredited warehouses. We need to have WADA accredited warehouses if we want to have a pledge loan kind of scheme at rural level, at grassroots level. So for that decentralized kind of warehousing, we have another, another type of value chain development sub-project. Then fourth, we have a innovations in value chain. There are many startups who are, who are offering different services to these value, uh, to these pharma producer companies for managing their daily affairs or for accessing the market, for traceability, for accessing the finance, for accessing the market. There are different startups. They are offering services. And what we do, which we have shortlisted about 60 startups, such startups. And a pharma producer company, if you want to access the service of this startup, we offer them 60% of fees of that startup will be borne through the project. 40% will be by that uh, pharma producer company. This is a fourth type of value chain development sub project. Fifth one is in cotton. There are issues in cotton value chain. So those are being addressed through the special smart cotton value chain uh, development sub project. So likewise, these are the kinds of value chain development sub projects. You can have your own. You need not have a project like Smart Everywhere. The schemes which we implement, the centrally sponsored schemes, the state sponsored schemes, what are these schemes? These schemes are nothing but uh, components like Smart. They are available in all schemes. The, here comes the role of projectized extension. We all are working in compartment. There are tens of schemes and hundreds of components in all centrally sponsored schemes. About 55 schemes we are implementing as a Department of Agriculture. And if you go for component, the components are about 500. You, if you are a field worker, you will, you just go through the guidelines of a NFSM, which is implemented everywhere in the, in the country. You will observe that there are so many components in NFSM, which can be converted into a kind of smart project. Now, how can we do that? You assume after this lecture, you are going to for a lunch. Now, this there is a cafeteria and all kind of food is available from salad to ice cream. Do you eat all things? We don't. We make our plate with the menu we like. Some are vegetarian, some are non-vegetarians. Some may take both things, but the rotis will be common. So likewise, what is, what is a small project for a pharma producer company, for a block, for a taluk, for a village, for any development unit? You pick and choose the food and make your plate. Likewise, it's a cafeteria of schemes. You choose and pick all the components required for the development unit in question. Maybe a pharma producer company, maybe a village, maybe a taluka. And you prepare your project. Then it becomes a value chain development sub project for that development unit, for that commodity, for that geography. So likewise, you can prepare, a, you can contemplate a value chain development sub project for your region, for your commodity, for the beneficiaries in question. Now, this is the what we offered 60% subsidy for a hardware. Hardware required for a value chain development. Uh, hardware may be a warehouse, may be a cold chain, may be a implement bank, anything. There we offered 60%, but for software, we offered 100%. What is this software? This software is nothing but the value chain development school. We are spending 12 lakh rupees per beneficiary pharma producer company on the extension activities and that set of package of extension we are calling it as a value chain development school. 
this this idea this very idea generated after after the training that we took and we developed that into a value chain development school what are all the components of this value chain the same one the same tools we use for extension the first one we designed is the take market meet we are giving rupees 1 lakh rupees for a, conducting a take market take market meet in a district what will be the activity in a uh, in a take market meet the objective would be to bring all the actors of a particular value chain on one platform and then increase the efficiency of that existing value chain how can that be done activities would be call all the actors right from input dealer to the consumer and organize them separately in different groups ask them to depict the expectation from other from other actor of a value chain now this is the practical now it is not in training class you call all the real life actors and you told them to depict the, their difficulties or expectation from the other actors of value chain there will be many things then they will sit together and will decide how our value chain can be developed now the beneficiary is pharma producer company they will the many technologies will be demonstrated before them some seed company would say mine is the better variety better hybrid some uh, micronutrient company would say this will give the better result some plant protection company would say this will give the better result then there would be universities the if uh, some wrong claim false claim is made if a potential of a germplasm is not of that kind then the private sector technology providers can't bluff because our universities would also be there then the processors then the other technology providers end users all will be there and from that churning the value existing value chain will be written on blackboard and the improved value chain will be there and the role of each actor who will buy from whom all these it will be a kind of buyer seller meet also because the market players would also be there so this is the first intervention we we tried and we call it as a, a take market meet and thereafter whatever decided in that take market uh, would rule the other activities suppose then next would be the crop demonstrations now we call them as a market led crop demonstrations now whatever technologies finalized in the take market meet will be demonstrated in the crop demonstrations how that acts as a market led demonstrations suppose a commodity in question is a maize or a corn there are two types of industries in corn one is the feed manufacturers they need protein rich varieties and the another kind of industry is a starch industry now the starch industry would say you grow this variety i will offer you premium price a protein rich variety would receive a premium price from different set of industry now this will be the variety that will be demonstrated in crop demonstration would depend upon the end user not on the uh, public sector hybrids or public sector varieties now what we do in nfsm or any other scheme what we say don't use the uh, variety which is released before 10 years or we may say you need to procure the public sector hybrids only but if you go to a uh, number of hybrids available in maize the sector is entirely dominated by the private sector and if you talk of a uh, uh, using the private sector hybrid that will not work for development of a value chain we need to use the technologies which are developed by the competent technologies developed by the private sector also there we will invest the money so this is how the crop demonstrations are super imposed instead of only developing the uh, production led extension this will be a market led extension demonstrations then the next thing is the farmer field school while conducting in the farmer field school we know it is a tool developed by fao particularly for cotton and now being extensively used in extension activities in all crops there what we do a season long a plot is there 30 farmers would come there weekly or 
bi-weekly. They will observe the plot and whatever the problems are there at each growth stage are discussed and the, by this way we are disseminating the technology or disseminating the knowledge. But here, whatever technology we demonstrated, all those technology providers will come at appropriate stage in the field school. Likewise, the entire value chain will be addressed. It will not be just a technology demonstration of public sector. Whatever is required for value chain, all these actors will visit this field school at appropriate stage and will make their contribution for value chain development. Then we have usually training come exposure visits. What we are doing in training and exposure visit, we are taking all the beneficiary farmers of this farmer producer company of whom we are developing a value chain development sub project, taking these people to the other actors during exposure visit. We are entering into MOU with the national research centers, state agriculture university research center of that particular commodity and we are offering some grants to them also to have a cafeteria of a technology where that technology is demonstrated on field and during exposure visit, suppose they, this exposure visit is of three days and if it is out of state, it may be of a five days. We are focusing on value chain. Means in a, in a research center, there will be a one day classroom training. Second day, they will visit the field of that national research center. Third day, they will go to the practitioner farmer where this technology is tried, a innovative farmer, a resource farmer. So by this way, the exposure visits and training can also be designed to address the value chain development concerns of that commodity. Now another thing we are doing is the gap certification, organic certification, here also based on the need of a market. Where there is a market, that much area should be concentrated for gap certification. If I am exporting to Europe, my grapes are exporting to Europe, my pomegranates are being exported, my vegetables are being exported, then the gap certification would be of those farms where they need to comply the necessities of export. Means who are the beneficiaries? The beneficiaries would be those farmers which are registered on the wage net, grape net, anar net. These are the all softwares being run by Apeda. You might be knowing or you may know now. Now the beneficiaries would be registered farmers where we'll, we will invest on the certification agency, the record maintenance and the minimal infrastructure they need to comply the gap good agricultural practices, maybe a global gap or ind gap or euro gap as per the need of that market. The small infrastructure, what the infrastructure they require? They need to have a latrine in the farm. They need to have a special room for storage of pesticides. There is a special way of disposing of the uh, pesticide containers. All these sort of infrastructure would be there in uh, that farm. And they need to declare certain things, they will not use child labors, etc. So these all these compliances are being addressed through the project. Now thereafter we have kept a special component of exposure visit to foreign countries of the farmers and of the extension worker. So that they will know what is the value chain of that commodity overseas which is a competitor to us. Suppose we are exporting grapes, which is the country which is exporting grapes and which is competing with India. We need to send our people to those countries to look into how the value chain of specific commodity is being operated there. And then only they will have a in-depth knowledge and then they will be able to improve our value chain after coming from there. Now, how the, how the people work? I will quote a small example. We visited one company in Netherlands which was basically a company for cold storage, cold chain. But when we visited that company, we found in one premise, in one big hall, there are six offices. Then we asked there are different names, why these, are, these companies are there? They said these are the actors are 
involved in the value chain of a of a fruit then one is exclusively looking after transport one is looking exclusively after finance one is looking exclusively after insurance one is looking only after the uh, residue testing so all players were there in one hall and they are complementing each other they are giving businesses to each other but they are separate entities and there is a grower organization which is connected to this company they are working together they are coming on one platform and developing a value chain so i think with the existing resources also we can have a projectized extension the entire notion of looking after the extension need to be changed may say a production led market led now a value chain development based extension need to be there we need to formalize these training courses so there is a training course in uh, manage regarding value chain i took one up session in vanamati nagpur for entire 3 days i was there first day we told them what are the uh, it's a kind of role play you act as a actor of one action then depict the difficulties then you di- divide the same group into different commodities some will look after citrus some will look after grape so i mean cotton whatever commodities the officers came from which geography we allotted that crop to them and we told them write the value chain of your commodity existing value chain and have a brainstorming and tell us how will improve this value chain and to improve the value chain there need to be a project of own and the cafeteria of different schemes can be accessed and you can prepare your own project and similarly there will be a hardware of a project and there will be a software of a project so by this approach i think we need to change the perspective of entire extension and there is no good place than the manage to do this because we used to come often to manage during the natp days 2002 2000 up to 2005 when the atma was mainstream in the entire country then we told that rural development is a different and agriculture extension is a different and for agriculture extension this is a revised tool after t and v and we need to think of a farming system of uh, extension that's why it is needed and then that was mainstreamed similarly if we want to have a another reform of value chain development based agriculture extension i think the uh, the inner voice of mind said that i need to go to manage i need to tell this idea and it is not just a idea we are practicing this in maharashtra so we need to mainstream this kind of extension nationwide i hope uh, sooner or later uh, the planners all will be convinced and i discussed with this uh, dr chandrasekhar ji also he said now uh, we need to re- uh, reform the extension in your perspective and we need to talk of this value chain development based extension and uh, uh, kindly he invited me and given this opportunity to present my thoughts before you thank you very much thank you very much sir for a very interesting and enlightening talk about value chain based extension you narrated the history and overview of agricultural extension in the country highlighting the main milestones like community development tnv extension atma market led extension and so on and you also narrated about uh, farmer producer companies how they are formulated uh, in maharashtra and uh, public private partnership for integrated agriculture development and how they can be private partners how can they be uh, taken care of in uh, developing the technologies and integrating the their technologies into agriculture extension and uh, value chain based ex- extension in agriculture what is it what is the need for it and the importance for farmers also you have uh, narrated uh, in brief and uh, for different products different value chains need to be developed and uh, designed and uh, how you underwent training and then how one can develop uh, these value chains that you have narrated very well sir in uh, different phases like uh, writing value chain analyzing value chain and then uh, uh, 
uh, how we can develop a win-win situation for all the actors in value chain. And uh, by using the marketing reforms and uh, uh, taking the benefits from existing schemes of government, how we can develop the value chain you have uh, narrated. And uh, by taking different examples like uh, soybean, maize, etc. And uh, also told about five different, different types of uh, value chains value chain development like uh, productive partnerships by identifying community-based organizations and uh, FPOs and uh, also about warehouse developments and innovations in value chain and projectized extension. And uh, at uh, value chain at district level, how they can be developed, uh, that also you have explained, like uh, uh, tech market meets and market-led crop demonstrations and exposure visits and training GAP and uh, GAP certification and organic certification. And then also overseas uh, visits uh, for the farmers uh, to successful examples. And uh, finally, you have said that uh, uh, value chain based extension can be projectized in each state by accessing cafeteria of different existing schemes. And uh, even without the help of any funding agency, even with the existing schemes, how we can go ahead in the value chain development you have explained in a very interesting fashion, sir. Thank you very much. Now I request uh, our Director General to thank the Chief Guest. Thank you, Dr. Jaya. First of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Deshrat Tambale, a long associate of Manage. He told uh, that he is associated with Manage from 1998 up to 2005, but now also you are associated. So that was a very intensive participation because on pilot basis, Atma was a tested, tested, pilot tested in seven states and 28 districts. During that time, we picked uh, very talented project directors of uh, some of the districts. And Dr. Dasha Tambale was one such, he was heading uh, Ahmadnagar district in uh, Maharashtra. So later, of course, uh, he contributed a lot. Regarding today's topic, first time academically we revisited the very definition of agricultural extension when we wrote Dublin Farmers Committee Income Report. If you go to volume number 11, maybe in the first few pages itself, we wanted to redefine agricultural extension because it is not mere transfer of technology. We wanted to make it very clear among the extension fraternity. So it is not mere transfer of technology, it is empowerment of the farmers. So it is time taking, it requires you know a lot of patience of extension worker, but that is the very objective of agricultural extension. It is not passing on a message A from X to Y. It is not simple mechanical process. Ultimately, this message should end up with some kind of empowerment. And also first time we brought the component of income to the agricultural extension definition. All our extension efforts should result in the income. But income is the end. But what is the means? The means is commodity specific value chain extension. So this word is specifically mentioned in the very definition of agricultural extension. That is what uh, Dr. Darshan Tambale explained uh, today. I'll just give you a very small example. You take uh, the average income of any Indian family, farmer's family. See, one of the latest survey, it says that per month, a farmer's family income is 10,329 rupees. Let us say uh, per day for a family, it is around 344 rupees. This is one side of the story. If you take all 130 million farmers, because we follow the production oriented extension, by the time the far farmer harvest, we disappear. We say that our responsibility is over, but actually our responsibility starts from there because at least 50 to 60 percent of the profit which farmers earn, it starts from that particular point. Today's talk, it starts from there. Otherwise, we all know that the INM, IPM, water management, soil management, pest and disease management, we continue to you know, tell to the farmers. But have we told them 
at what is the right time for harvesting how the sorting grading packing branding can be done what kind of infrastructure facility is required is it a cold storage or a warehouse who will take care of cold storage do we have the necessary skills who will finance our value chain infrastructure whether banks there are certain schemes or should we look for non you know formal you know banking sector then who is purchasing our commodities what is the price given is there any commitment these are all the questions unanswered by regular extension which is production centric extension but actually this language has to be changed to commodity specific i would like to emphasize here the kind of extension value chain extension you provide for tomato and to the goat are entirely different you provide for coffee and to the paddy are entirely different and the same paddy in the summer and uh, in the karif season are entirely different therefore it is location specific real time commodity centric value chain extension is the requirement of agricultural extension that is what uh, dr daksh dashrath was trying to emphasize uh, you have a long way to go don't give generic information to the farmers including weather forecast average to medium rainfall what do you, what do you mean by that we have to tell whether he has to cut to harvest his crop today or not i think that is the kind of interpretation of the weather forecast simply by for, uh, passing on the weather forecast i don't think farmers can take a decision we should help him to take a decision the similar way this commodity specific location specific real time you know value chain extension gives very specific information starting from sowing till it goes to the consumer plate we are not talking about you know just agricultural uh, you know marketing or processing systems basically it is a food system now up to the consumer plate we have a role to take you know take uh, the role of farmers up to consumer plate that is what we are talking about what kind of value additions can be done whether farmers can prepare something and he can sell it to the consumers directly these are all aspects which are covered by you know value chain extension and when we talk about value chain extension it is not only the scientific organizations come into picture the where what uh, indian institute of horticulture research says uh, what uh, uh, indian institute of rice research says but also we should recognize the role of private sector in value chain extension the public private partnership is must the role of the private sector people is very important whether it is infrastructure gap whether it is a credit gap whether it is a processing related issues technology gap many more things are there and for example exporters will come into picture if we talk about commodity value chain extension so we are not touching transporter we are not touching uh, the warehouse manager we are not touching the exporter we are not touching the importer outside the country these are all the people the future extension is going to address therefore the extension is not mere transfer of technology the extension is not keeping farmer as only one uh, the target group you have many target groups you have banker you have infrastructure creator you have a, a value addition person we have processor you have exporter you have importer you have policy maker all the people are covered by value chain extension so this is not mere a talk it broadens the horizon of every extension workers uh, in the country so we have to you know think in that direction i i can feel actually what you spoke because we had a very lengthy discussion thank you very much